welcome Stephanie and Jen as they come up. So, I'm so sorry, Josh. I'm just going to be tired Thursday emotional support, so. Yeah, I just told them, I'm like, I'm just realizing all of a sudden this is like me for an hour. I just want to make sure that there's enough going on up here. I'm like, you don't, we need more than my answers. But I think the reason I talked to these guys a couple years ago about just having a class. How many of you have been in classes where there's like, they open it up for questions and answers and you're just like, I did not pay for this. I did not pay to hear you talk the whole time about this thing, right? Well, well, I mean, not for me to talk. I mean, for like, there's somebody else in the room and they decide to get up and they don't just have a question. They got to, they're going to talk about everything because this is their moment. And I understand the thing is we want to hear that. We care about you having your moment, but not at the expense of everyone else. So it's one of those things where I was like, maybe if we have a question and answer class, that's all it is about worship leading, then people can kind of come and know what they're getting. And you get to be here by choice and not just sitting there like frustrated because somebody else is talking all the time. So that being said, we love your story. We love your life story. Try not to spend time on the mic sharing it just because we want to get to as many questions as we can. But we also like the life on life. So we do want to hear the question from you and have a moment with you. So that's, it's all special. Anyways, Josh is going to facilitate this. So whoever the first brave soul is, just walk across and just come up here, and then a line may form behind me. Yeah, it's that way we're not blocking too many people's views. So you guys can probably scoot over. Just family room style. So just go ahead and be a brave bear, and we'll do our best to answer, and we'll tell you when we don't know. (laughs) Don't know. Don't know the answer to that one. (laughs) Love it. Hello. Um, Just wondering. Can you turn that mic up in here for us? how you would suggest um, helping guide a team that may not not be used to more spontaneous movement or, um, I guess, like Holy Spirit moments in worship. How can we encourage a team to step into that more? Yeah, yeah. I think one of my favourite answers to this question is when I hear Jonathan and Melissa Helser talk about it because they, um, they talk about... In their rehearsals, what they do is they really nail the song, and then they say, okay, now we're going we're gonna to go off the map a bit. And, and so the team gets comfortable and confident in that place of kind of like leaning in and listening, and they just go off, and they'll just play and see where it goes. As Martin Smith would say, taking it wherever it goes. And um, it, it builds the confidence in your team, like in your team members, and you have these holy moments together that aren't just happening from a stage. So you actually build um, an anointing together. You build like a connection together that's really important if you want to go further. Um, so really practically, you just, you just have to do it. You play. You set aside time. You know. Um, I also think it's really helpful when you are on the stage. Jump, please jump in on all the things. When you when you um, <laughs> when you are live in a moment and they're new to it, it really, really can help if you, um, you pick a chord progression or some, a section that is in, already in a song you're doing. Already in a song you're doing and you just float there. Okay? And see what happens. And maybe you step out a little bit together. Or you, you, maybe you lean into one of your guitarists and you go, you know, play, you know, play something right here. Maybe you see something on them. Just it builds confidence a little bit at a time. A little bit of time, they grow into it, you know? You don't want to throw them under a bus so much that they, like, can't even, they can't even worship because they're so <laughs> terrified, white-knuckled, you know? Practical, but it's, it really helps. Hi. Hi. Okay, so... You can ha- say your name. <clears throat> I'd love to hear your name. I'm Joy. Hi, um, Joy. So how would you guys talk about practically, like, trying to carry a culture of honor while also stewarding revival? Like, in churches that aren't Holy Spirit um, filled, but like you, you are. And as a worship leader, you're trying to steward that and bring revival in your church. Sorry, I lost my voice. <clears throat> um, but like trying to honor your body and your pastor and your leadership. I think you need to find out what your leader wants. Because if they don't want that, you might be in the wrong place. 
And it's not hard feelings. It's not. We've had a lot of people that they've come here. We've gone places. They just didn't want it. You know, we, we, we went to a ministry one time, and I said, do, please do not speak in tongues while you're leading worship. We felt like we were supposed to be there, so we were there, but we honored that. We didn't speak in tongues. And so the, I think there's got to be some simple honor of what, what do they want, you know? I think it's really important to sit down with your lead, your main pastor and your, the leadership team and say, hey, what do you want? And if that's not what, and maybe you feel, still feel called there, but that's not what they want, go find a place to burn in a home group, go find a place, to, go find to have an outlet for what you're doing. If you still feel called there, keep your attitude good, but serve what their, what their vision is and God can still use it and ask the Holy Spirit to give you, you know, secret ways to fully bring that without having this attitude of, right. I'll show you, that, that'll kill you. But ask the Holy Spirit to give you strategy of how to release the Holy Spirit without whatever it is that they're not comfortable with yet. And, and bite size, you know? And ask for, maybe your leader's super scared because they've seen a mess. Ask for, hey, I know that this is what we're doing. Is there any way that, that I could do this today? You know, some leaders are very scared and it's okay. And I think that through relationship and through conversation, you can get to a really beautiful place. But if that's not what they want, you gotta honor that. When we have trouble with that, it's typically because we have an issue in our own hearts. Um, because there is, I, I struggle with the phrase when the grace lifts because I don't believe it does. If you're supposed to be somewhere, there's always grace for you to be there, you know? And I don't think the Lord removes grace from us to speak to us. But I do believe that there is a time, like Jen said, if, if you feel called to something and it's peaceful, there's no snarl. There's no attitude underlying. Like, I'll just go somewhere else. Because you're going to take that attitude with you wherever you go. But if you can go, okay, I honor that, but I do know the Lord is calling me to do this. I can leave in peace. You can leave your peace with them and then move on. And you just, yeah, always check that. Thanks, Joy. He's pastoring him through the question. <laughs> uh, so my question was kind of similar to hers. Uh, my okay. name is Jared. Um, but what are some ways that you can uh, maximize, I guess, the Holy Spirit in places where, you know, we're in churches that are so, like, stuck on, like, schedules and, like, you have 17 minutes and that's it. So what are some ways that you can kind of break, not necessarily break out of it, but still honor them and also bring the Holy Spirit and stuff like that? You know what? First, and this is not a correction. This is because I've been, in, I've been where you are. And first, the Holy Spirit had to deal with my box, which said that I didn't think he could move in 17 minutes. That's good. The truth is that he, he only needs a moment. He can do what he wants. And if you come in prepared to those 17 minutes, those people will never forget it, and neither will you. Yeah. It doesn't take much. When, when, when we come ready, you don't need more than that. And so first, and I don't think you have, I don't sense any attitude on you. I'm just, I'm being in it with you going, oh, I've been there. Yeah. And that's the first thing the Lord had to do with me. Um, and what happens is if you're faithful with those 17 minutes and God explodes and there's fruit on the tree, then your pastor is going to give you 20. Yeah. And then he might give you 25. And it's amazing when you build trust in that place, Jesus grew in favor and stature. God, guys, help me. I just lost it. With God and man, I just blank in Thursday, Thursday, second week, right? So we, so we have to, too. So that's part of it. I know that sounds really practical, but you can do it. It's inside of you. Yeah. Thank you. I need to move this a little bit. <laughs> hey there, guys. Hey. <laughs> I'm Audrey. I still can't Sweet really Audrey. speak to it. Can I? Okay. Yes, Sweet. Audrey. Thanks. <laughs> um, so question, <laughs> when I was reading the description for this class, it was saying like, learn how to hear and follow the Holy Spirit in worship. And um, I know what my own journey with that is, but I'd love to hear both of you in, in how you hear and respond to the Holy Spirit while you're leading a team, and then how you can all do that together as a team well. Oh, thanks. Um, I think practicing hearing the Holy Spirit um, is we're teaching right after this. We're, we're going to do a class uh, on prophecy too. So that it's all having, I think prophecy is very simple. You're just hearing, doing your best to hear what he's saying or doing, and you just do your best to do it. So I think, but a practical tip is practicing your normal life, yeah. hearing the Holy Spirit. Like this is, 
you know, we're, we're still practicing his presence up here. Obviously, it's going to be childlike forever. But, you know, practice hearing and obeying, you know, when you're not in a musical setting. And I think this, anytime you're up on a stage, it's the overflow of your life. So yeah. um, it's, it's being brave. It's being courageous. It's, you know, letting the Holy Spirit just Im any impression that you just go with it if you feel like it's him and constantly being connected with your leadership because yeah. there's sometimes where you feel like it was the Lord and it wasn't, you know, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. It's not a problem, but just being able to hear feedback of, hey, I, that, I don't think that was great or that, that, that just wasn't, I don't yeah. think that, and, and to not let it crush you. Right. Right. I, the Bible says to love discipline and to love correction, and that's tough, but I think just keeping an open hand, doing your best to be brave and to follow the Holy Spirit, practicing when no one's watching, and then also to keep an open hand to this thing called prophecy. We're supposed to weigh it, which is hearing and doing. So just keeping an open hand. And that's good. Thank you. I think that's so beautiful. Um, I, would, I would have said the you know, same thing to you. And I think practically, when I'm like in a moment, really, uh, I, my ears burn. My ear, when when the Lord's talking to me, my ears burn. I'm like, okay, what? You know. That's funny. That's and, and again, it, me. yeah, yeah. Recently, I was like, it feels it's weird to it's me. so sweet, huh? He speaks to us in all different ways. Some yeah. it's a, and sometimes it comes with just a knowing. And there are times when it like he'll give you something ahead of time that you've been sitting with before you come, yeah. and then you kind of feel out: is this going to be in the set? Is this going to be in the service, or or is this something that I was just going to release into the atmosphere? Jen's really good. At, she she's taught us many times. Like, if there's not room in a set for it, sing it off the mic. Ste yeah. Step back and release yeah. it into the atmosphere. It's just as powerful. Yeah. It's really good. You got to be obedient to release it, whether you have your moment on the right. mic. That's not the point. Um, so I'm just quoting you. Uh, and then, but um, <laughs> it is great. I'm just quoting her. But. It's it's true. I think um, so. Sometimes it's beforehand. The Lord's stirring it in our spirits, and then sometimes when you hear it, it's the first time I heard it too, and I just chuckle because I didn't expect that to come out. It does happen. Prophecy happens all the ways, but often my ears burn when I know He's trying to get my attention. And knowing if it's for you or the body, is that yeah. like a, just a practice as We're well? We're just always asking. Okay. I have this simple thing that I do with the Lord when I feel something to just run it through a filter is I literally say red light, green light. Like when I get something from the Lord. So say it's maybe like a, a picture or whatever. As far as releasing it or seeing it on the mic, I just say red light, green light. I don't have to say it anymore because I just, you know. See the color, yeah. Yeah, and, and just go with it. If you feel like it's him, go with it. But just a, a simple filter with the Holy Spirit is great. And yeah. the, the other thing is if you're getting something when you're leading and maybe you didn't have the time to sing it out or maybe it just never felt right, but you're just still carrying that, what I like to do, I used to be frustrated after worship, like, oh, we didn't get where I feel like <laughs> I saw we were going, you know. But a great practice is take what you're getting or feeling even before the set, if you ha or, or after, and connect with your local pastor. Connect with the person preaching. It's crazy, man. I'll, I'll have felt something, and then at the end of it, we, we didn't go there or whatever, you know? Totally. And I'll just go down, and I'll say, hey, I just want to submit this to you. I was getting this during worship, and I'll just kind of like, just kind of present it to them. Like, I just want to tell you what I was getting. And it's wild. Sometimes it's nothing, and they're like, oh, cool. But so connected so many times. So stay in contact with your leaders. Don't make it like the guy who preaches and the worship team. Like, we're all in leading the church together. And so just, you know, check with them before. Tell them what you're getting or after. And it's pretty fun. Thanks so much, you guys. Hi, my name's Blake. And I'm asking this for my little Spanish-speaking friend, oh, Danny, over so there. Oh, so sweet. Yeah, there she is. Good friend, Blake. Um, what is a fear for either one of you to answer? What's a fear that you had to overcome when you first started leading worship? <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> I mean, that I wouldn't do it right. <laughs> super basic, um, super real. That I wouldn't do it the way God wanted me to do it. I mean, really simple. I, I have a, the way that I'm wired is like, I, I have a need to make things, to be in a right standing with God and with the people around me. And it ta it's just like, I know you're like that too. It's just like, it eats at me if things aren't right between me and the people, like people. So before the Lord, I'm just like, am I, do am I doing this well? Like when I go to bed at night, those are the things I have to deal with an inner critic and, and invite Holy Spirit into that moment. So I don't overthink it or, or let go, oh, did I, did I miss something? Did I... Did I say everything I thought I he heard you saying, you know? And, and, you know, and he's just like, did you do your best? Did you do your best? 
did you worship me? You know, did I, I was happy with it. Can, can you be? And, um, you know, there are moments for correction, but uh, Melissa Hauser talks about, you know, like we, when we live our lives open in an open conversation with Holy Spirit and with community and our leaders and our family, you just like, you're like 90% praise and 10% correction, if that, because we stay connected. So there's not less messes, the more connected we stay, right? So I don't know if that's helpful, but that's honest for me. Did you have a... Um, when I was younger, I had to overcome, especially, fear of not being as good as other people. I used to be my friend's background singer, you know, when I was younger, and I just never thought I had a great voice. I just could play piano and be, was a BGB. I had to actually grow in that, and I think I grew in it, but I had to, I always was overcoming fearing sounding like someone else or trying to sound like someone else, and I had, I had to just get that out of my head of, like, don't fear if you are or you aren't. Like, just just worship and just, you know. So, yeah, lots of, lots of hurdles. We could t- yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a book. A, there's a list, but that's, those, are the, those are the mains. Hi, I'm Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Um, so I've heard you all talk a lot about, like, you can't drag people along in worship. You have to kind of, like, excuse me, start where they are and lead them. What are some practical things that you do to kind of accomplish that? I think... Uh, really practically, I know a lot of people say you can't take people where you've never been. I believe that mostly. I don't really believe that entirely. I think that's sort of a it's not thought through statement. <laughs> um, it's both. It really is both. I think that we should, like before the Lord, honor, like not expect that he would trust us to lead them in a place that we haven't gone. And at the same time, God always does that. (laughs) He's always leading us to do things. We have no idea where we're going. And that's part of the beauty of it, you know, Um, is that lean. I mean, that's the intimacy of it. Um, So I'm talking about things, and I'm forgetting your question. Question is practically, how do we start where people, yeah, lead people into that. Jen, how do we practically lead people into that? Um, (laughs) I literally am like, I'm struggling with a blank a, a simple, page. It sounds so silly. A simple thing for me <laughs> is to connect with the people, not like my little musos, but to connect with the people in the room before I go on stage. So I usually make sure that after sound check, I don't stay in the back. I come down here and I just talk with a few people. And it just keeps you connected to the room. Yeah. yeah. And I think Great. that just Great. keeping that in mind and it just, it's crazy, okay. but it, change people hug a few people that aren't on your worship team like just it just keeps you connected in a way and just being mindful that of the people who are in your crowd like when you're standing there and the opener starting and you know I like just look people in the eye and just look at them like and I know some of them I don't know some of them just but just get a ask the Holy Spirit to give you a pastoral heart for the room of how to lead them together that that helps me yeah they'll go they'll go anywhere with you if they trust you they feel safe with you. That's really true. I'm like queen over here. But it's, it's true. Like you look people in the eyes. And we, we, want, we get so caught up in wanting to pull them into this prophetic moment. But the truth is that people just need some pastoring. They just need you to pastor them in a moment and lead them in. We don't like to get really talky-talky in worship. But sometimes when you just sense like something's happening in the room, you just, if you give a little bit of language to it and come right back in to worship, it changes the whole game. Because people are like, oh, yeah, no, I can do that. I can connect to that. So, well, Lastly, sometimes people just need permission. Hey, like if you just, if you simply just say, let's just lift our hands this morning. It's amazing how people just need permission. Like, oh, we do that here? Just little simple pastoring cues of, of like she, exactly what she's saying. Pa- little pastoring cues when you feel like, you know, you see where they need to go, but they aren't go- going there. It just goes for miles. Hi, Steph. Hi, Jen. My name is Jackie. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, after all the years that you've had behind you in worship leading, what do you implement individually to keep yourselves fresh and to keep the passion alive, I guess, and not, you know, I guess, keep you through the times where you want to step off and set it aside for a bit when you've been doing it for years and years and years. So what, what do you guys do? Woo! It's very real. Honestly, we love you. We love you. 
way to just come in like a wrecking ball, Jackie. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think for me, it sounds simple, but God bless Christine. For me, it's like being with my family, being, doing really simple things keeps me grounded. It's easy to be too self-important in these environments and want to be the one that comes in and drops the bomb or want to be, it's easy to, when this is so much of your life is leading people, you have to make sure that you are constantly being led. <laughs> you have to make sure you're constantly being led. And, and that, um, for me, like, having fun, playing, lots of playing so you don't take yourself too seriously and miss what the Lord's trying to do. Um, watering my plants, talking to them. I do, I'm, I'm with Christine on that. It's like little things. God is in all of it. And because if we'll value those things like dancing with my daughter, we have routines every day. We have, it, we have the way we spend time together. My husband and my daughter, we're finding rhythms and keeping those rhythms gives me a capacity for everything else I do. You know, um, making sure that I'm leading myself or being led in worship as much as I'm leading. There's gotta be balance. Yeah. I don't know if that really answers your question, yeah. but for me, it's, that, it's simple that way. Jen thinks so, too. <laughs> I love nature also. Yeah, get out. If I'm connected to nature and I read my Bible, everything's cool. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Jonathan. Um, so worship leading is something that I've always wanted to do, but I feel like I'm being called in that direction uh, by God, but... Something that I find is that when I start leading, I start getting really emotional upon reflecting on lyrics to a point where I can't, like, continue a song. I so. love you. <laughs> Jonathan, that's, an, that's precious. So yep. I was wondering if you guys had any tips to overcome that or anything. I don't know if that's a thing to overcome, but friend. I, I just, I just stop. Like, I don't mid, think so. Like, I'll listen to I pieces in my car and just like. He, he, here, let me tell you this right now. I'm going to prophesy to you. I want you to listen right now. There is a tenderness on you. And God, there, you are not to shut down that tenderness. There is a time, there is a time to be able to remember lyrics, and then there, there's a reason why they're not sticking with you. There's a reason why you're being so overcome with emotion that you can't even get it out. You are leading more worship in that moment than you have any idea about. You are leading more worship in that moment. Let them, let them have the words. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. But in that moment, God is wanting to do more than we can even fathom, and it's obviously beyond words. So I wouldn't fight that. God will, God will give you the ability to come through. I don't know how many times, that's happened to me a number of times with a song, and he just, it's, you got to give in. When the wave that, that's hitting you is the Holy Spirit, you let it crash over you, and you just ride the wave, you know? You'll sing the words when you need to. Okay. And they'll sing them out. Okay. Well, you know, write them down somewhere so they can see them. <laughs> Put them up on a wall. They'll figure it out. Just bless you on your journey. Thank you. So glad. Thank you so much. So glad you're leading worship. <laughs> Hello. No kidding. My name's Hannah, um, and I just wanted to ask you, uh, how much of worship leading is just you spending time with Jesus on stage? I mean, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's always both. Um, you know, when I was younger, I had a really hard time. I, I, I thought, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, this isn't our bedroom. This isn't the bedroom. This is the family room. And there are things you don't bring into the family room that you leave in the bedroom. Uh, but, and it's that, it can be that simple. <laughs> it sounds cheesy, but I just remember learning, like, when I was younger, I would, I would close my eyes so tight and I would think it was like I was gonna lose him if I didn't, if I didn't go away and, ke and keep that bedroom thing because I wanted to be able to release that. But the thing is, I, I can't help but release it when it's what I've stewarded in secret, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think in this setting, it just comes with time that you, you learn that you're actually never separate from that place. You're never not with him. But it's also never just you when you're here. But God, the beauty 
about God is that he's everywhere all at once. And he can be alone with me while he's with everyone else in the room alone. And also be with us corporately in the same moment. He's like, he's amazing. So I think um, worrying about that tends to be, we overthink it. But, um, like we're going to lose the Holy Spirit if we are, pay attention to the room too. And we're not. It's actually just growing um, it's actually just growing our sensitivity to what he's doing so that you can hear him in crowded rooms too. You know, it's just when we're alone with him, it's way easier to hear him because there's nobody else. But when we get into a room like this, it gets noisier. And so the more we listen in secret, that's the voice we'll hear when we're in a big room with lots of people. And you'll know that you're never away. Like you're, you're, he's always right there. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah. 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 You can be confident that he never leaves you when you're leading. But we have to be mindful of people always, you know. Thank you. Hi, my name's Yoel. Uh, so sometimes I kind of find myself like having really busy days and then going to lead worship and like I, I just, I'm not able to deal with like some stuff and process and so I'm on there battling like, okay, am I going to be honest with myself and what I am going through and like just worship God or like just lead them from a place of uh, where I feel like it should go kind of thing. So I'm just like wondering what you would do in that. Yeah. Um, you know, leading in any capacity, whether you're leading worship or preaching in anything, you know, you know, you just have hard moments before you walk on the stage. And sometimes you're like loving life and everything's cool. But um, for me, being in leadership for like 18 years, it's, it's more often not than I've got so, you know, a lot going on, right, um, that aren't fun or, you know, just wait. Or, um, for me, I have just two things that really help me. I have to make sure that when I step up to lead, I'm not faking anyone out, first of all. But at the same time, God's eternal faithfulness and glory hasn't skipped a beat. And so for me, mentally, I can anchor myself in that. I could sing any song. Um, but I think it's more important that we don't drag our own lives into the worship set than anything else. In, in, in the sense of, pro, like, it's not about us. And so I think that just check yourself. Right. And check yourself with your emotions. And when I walk up here, I literally let the Holy Spirit wash as I'm coming through those doors, even as I'm doing my vocal warm-ups. I let the Holy Spirit wash my mind, all the situations. And I just ask for clarity, Lord, that whatever I'm feeling. And, you know, there's sometimes I come here, I'm just depressed. I'm just literally like, there's not one situation, but I literally feel a heaviness. And I'll just ask the Lord, Lord, is this something that you are wanting to go after today in worship? And then again, it's red light, green light red light, green light, but I just let, just wash my situation, Lord, just wash this and give me a clarity, I thank you that this is who you are, and then you just do your best, man, don't stress it, you know, do your best, clean hands, pure heart, get up there, and just let the Lord lead you, you know, a lot of times people are like too fearful of things, and just do your best, and you're gonna, you're gonna kill it, and you're gonna fail on your face, and it's fine, it's fine, just do your best, and, 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 you know, if, that, if that's the moment you find yourself in, just don't process it out loud on the microphone. Pick songs that, are this, that, that go this way. Maybe that's not the day you do, you know, uh, a song that goes into like a, because I'm all about writing the songs that get down into the thing. But, but maybe, that's what, maybe that's when you pick like just one of those completely vertical, we are going here, I'm setting my eyes, and you draw people into that place. You know, those are good songs to pick on days like that. Thanks. I'm Priscilla. How does diversity and culture play a role in worship leading? And have you dealt with racial tensions on a worship team? And if so, how did you navigate through it and break the spirit of tradition? This is everyday life right now, is it not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, it's yeah. a beautiful question. Yeah. I, I remember, um, I'll tell you a really quick story, and then we can talk more about this, because I know this, this is an ongoing conversation for us right now. Right. We're constantly praying and asking the Lord about this and having conversations in hallways and all kinds of things about how do we do this? How do we, you know, <laughs> how does this, what is this supposed to look like? Um, but I, I remember being, um, 
right after a shooting, it was one of those situations where a police officer had shot a young uh, black young man. And I was in the South, I was in the deep South, like just right there. And I went to lead worship with Jeremy and uh, I was with Sean Foyt, I believe. And I literally, I had never seen it physically in front of me. I mean, you know, you hear about it, but then I, I was literally singing, we're on stage and half of the room was white and half of the room was black. I'm not even kidding. It's like without even realizing it, they had separated themselves. It was intense. And all of a sudden, I'm standing in the middle of the stage going, holy ghost. <laughs> holy ghost. And we had led, a, like, I think Jeremy had done a couple songs. and they, I mean, they were powerful, but it was like not budging. We're, and, and I'm just going, holy ghost, what are we doing? We're, no, we're, there's, this is not a corporate moment. Nobody's even singing together. It's like two different rooms. And, and he, I'm like, give me a song. And I don't think a song like that has ever come out of me before, and I don't know if it ever has since. But I started to prophesy and sing a song of healing. I couldn't even tell you what I said now because it was just coming out. And by the time we got to the end of it, every voice was lifted, and they had started merging the room. And I don't even, I, it was so shocking to me. I'm, it was so shocking to me that um. I mean, I had to process it with the Lord later, and we all talked about it. We're like, this was a very crazy physical manifestation of what's happening. I think that it's going to be really key for us to be led by the Spirit, to not be, say, stupid and insensitive things. Yeah. Hashtag all lives matter. Don't say that. <laughs> not in the face of someone's pain. No. It's not what we do. And we've got to be careful when we position ourselves in worship that we do not, as leaders from a platform, that we, Holy Spirit, give me the words, that we are standing on truth and that we're honest, that we don't react to a spirit and then enable it. Because what happens is when, we, when we're not led by the Holy Spirit, we react to the wrong spirit and we empower the wrong spirit. So when we live in reaction to somebody else's attitude or someone else's offense or someone else's pain, instead of being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what the person right in front of us needs, what our culture needs, then, then we empower that nasty spirit and we lose our influence with the people that need us in every community. So I know this isn't really practical, but I think so much of it is that in the church we need a mindset shift about how we speak to these things. Because they're watching us to see what we're gonna do. Are you gonna say anything? Are you gonna stand up? Are you gonna be silent? You know, We can't afford to be quiet, but we can't afford to say stupid things. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know, it's an ongoing journey with the Holy Spirit and with each other keeping each other accountable, saying, ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know about us posting that. I don't know about you saying that. Did you think about this? Did you think this through? Did you think about what was, this was communicating? You know, so I don't know, it's like, it's literally constantly every day as a team, we're looking at each other going, how do we do this better? I would love to hear you talk about that because it's so I huge. Was, I was just going to say, it's multi, this is multifaceted. So much to it. It's not one thing. It's not five. This is multifaceted. And I think we all have the same heart to do exa like, j exactly what you said, like yeah. to around the globe and like every tribe, every tongue, every race, like to celebrate who God is to them and through them and right. on them right. and to celebrate that and not to make it mine. But, you know, we come from this little tiny town in Northern California that's predominantly white, you know? Right. And so we are learning to not only see difference, but celebrate it and then figure out how we do it together. I don't want to do life where we have churches separated by race. Like, that's a nightmare to me. Like, but we have to lean in and we are in conversation in family. We are leaning into how do we do this together? Letting you fully be you and me fully be me. And it's a conversation. It's family. And it's, you know, there's always going to be a mob out there that are telling us the same mob that laid down palm branches for Jesus crucified him. 
So there's always going to be a mob of opinion, but like for us on these hot topics, we're leaning into family and we're leaning in just like she said to like how we do it well together. And, you know, we're always texting and calling each other going, ah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Or I love that. Or I love that. Yeah. And we all, what's, Christine Kane has a sex slavery ministry, A21, right? Right. She's carrying a burden for an injustice. That's not mine. It's not what God has called me to. And I think it's really important for us all to remember that the burden of sin, there's a whole bunch of them, but we're not all called to them. It crushes us. And what I'm called to is not what Steph's called to. Right. And so I think we've got to know that we're in this together, but we all can't all speak out and be speaking out on every single topic. Yeah, we're not going to speak out the same way. Yeah. It's not going to look the same way on everybody. Yeah. It's and true. So I think that that's it's a true. big topic too is finding our strengths, yeah. hearing on our weaknesses. But this, I mean, it's multifaceted. But I think the biggest thing is we're committed. Right. We're committed. Right. To exactly what you said, that that's what we're doing, and we're leaning in, asking the questions, yeah. hearing, yeah. and a lot's happening in family that's not happening online. And it always should be. I think, um, oh gosh, it's too big. I mean, that could be an hour. That that could be an hour. It could be five hours. Yeah, sorry. For us to process that and then go into intercession about it. Yeah. I think. Um, I mean, the truth is that, and some some people didn't grow up with any sort of awareness. They grew up in completely different cultures, which is, which is so funny. And you've got some of us who are like very much in, experienced, you know, that different culture and grew up with it. And we're going, hey, you know? And you've got these others like, oh, oh, I just, I was ignorant. I actually have not known this. And the truth is we have to be kind with them too and go, okay, let me, let me help you. Let me turn something up. <laughs> you need to hear a thing or two, right? So we're just, it's in family. It's just, it's in process. Yeah. Thank you for it. We're not trying to spin. It's just such a delicate, yeah. something we care about very much. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, my name's Janelle. Um, my question is, what have you found the most practical way to build community in your team? And what things have really worked well and then haven't really worked well? <laughs> We've tried a lot of things that haven't worked well. I think, you know, there are practical things that may work for everybody, but every community, every size of church, every we have a little bit of a different animal because it's so big. So sweet, sweet mom Jen is just always trying to rally community, and it's like nearly impossible. It's like herding cats, <laughs> just herding cats. Yeah. God bless her for it. I just think, I'm honestly, we, we're all passionate about eating together. You get to eat together, get together and play. It can't just be this sort of ministry setting. It has to be like doing life together. And our team's so big. We have like clusters that are closer to each other than others, but we all just adore each other. I mean, that yeah. is the truth. Deep love. And so I think um, really it's being together, gathering around tables. Yes. It's gathering in smaller groups, making sure that you come alive in that way. I don't, it's really practical things that you probably already do. Games, prayer, prophecy, minister to one another, Acts Church stuff, man. Okay, cool. Do Thank it. You. Do the stuff. Do all the stuff you do up here. Do it at home <laughs> with your people. Hey, guys, I'm Devin. Um, I come from a very small, that's my husband. <laughs> oh, so, what, did, I look, did I look crazy? Oh, somebody whistled? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So I come from a very, like, I have a very small worship team, yeah. very small um, tourism town. So a lot of my team works, like, crazy jobs and crazy hours. And um, kind of building off of her question is I really want to encourage my team for growth, but I know that I don't get a lot of time with them. I'll get there. Um, I don't get a lot of time with them. Yeah. But then I also don't want to come in and, like, when I do get that little bit of time and, like, barrage them with things. Oh, man. So you know. Totally. Yep. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. You're the one running this show. I'm, all, I'm, I'm on the back of the wagon, like, hey. No, she... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, she, she lets me be free. That's not the truth. But I'm just saying, you're, you feel that pressure in a way different way than we do. So that's why I'm I feel saying. that pain. I feel that right. pain. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, mes- the Helsers have this beautiful phrase about, you know, the oil for conflict comes from togetherness and family yeah, time. It's true. And it, I'll tell you one thing, just super brutally honest. Um, I have to actually fight for community, like fight for it, yeah. because it, it isn't something that, um, you know, how do I say this ni- nicely? Um, it's it's a nice word when you say it. Yeah. It's real beautiful when it works. But to get there and to get people to show up and actually have a value just to be with each other yeah. and to sit down, like, well, why would why would I spend time with that random bass player that I don't even know? When I'm and I'm like, oh hell no. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Because they're our family, that's why. Yeah. You don't always get to yeah. pick your family, but they are. Yeah. So having a value for people and it doesn't we have with our team, we gather for, you know, two hours once a month. Everybody comes over to our house, and it's something that I've heard 1,000 times. Why do we even do this? And we get together, and we eat, and we worship together, and the most important part that we do is we just hang out and life on life, and hey, how are you? And so if you can just encourage your team to break down the barriers of, yeah. like, why do we do this? And say, hey, totally. we're a family. Because you know what? When I know Steph's strength, when we work and we sing together, like, we're going to be able to go somewhere in the spirit yes. that we never could if it's, yes. if it's just this random person and this random person. Like, when you know people, where you can go in the spirit is so stunning. So, and it doesn't need to take much time. I get it. We all have big, busy lives. I don't see Steph one Tenth of the percentage I'd love to see her. Like, even us, we have to be, we, we haven't been good. When we hang out, we have so much fun. Like, we just, but we, literally, we have to schedule meetings. It's stupid. But, like, when you have a fast-paced life, we just have to be so intentional. And we don't, we haven't done a good job because there's lots of things going on. But right. don't worry about the pain of, like, you can't get everybody. Just encourage it. Celebrate what you can do. Let the Holy Spirit lay on your heart who you need to have coffee with or a lunch and put the table out there. And if keep they don't come to table. dinner, yeah, it's all right. Just celebrate what is happening and keep it up, girl. Thank you. So good. Hey, let's have dinner after this, huh? Like August? We'll no, pray about that, okay. Not, it was... Hi, uh, my name is Christine. Hi, Christine. So I think my question is kind of like continuation of what you said, but then a completely opposite side. So I actually oversee the worship department at my church, but then it's not very big, so I'd say 20 people. And we actually um, do hang out a lot, and then we have team nights and stuff where we have great relationship. But the challenge that I have is... She said, but. <laughs> I think it's because we... There are too... They have too much um, security. So, so let's say I have two... I only have two sound guys. And I only have two keyboard, keyboard players. And then let's say one keyboard player will come up be like, to me and be like, oh, there are, let's say, six services throughout the month. I'm gonna, I can only do two at most. And I'm like, okay, so does that mean the other person has to do four? Or, so I think that's, my question would be like, how would you um, comment on kind of navigating in between the setting expectations or what's required of them? And also, as a leader, I really care about their well-beings and, Kind of like the balance between all that. <laughs> Kathy, want to answer that question? I mean, do you remember the days when it was that many people? So that's how you had to work with this guy. I mean, where we come from, there were not always two of anything. So everybody yeah. did everything all the time. We were all just like, yeah. yep, I'm there. Mm-hmm. If there was a service, I'm there. So I don't, I don't know exactly how I would... Answer that. I mean, you you need to know that people are committed and maybe maybe like re um, cast vision again, kind of like have them recommit, kind of set it to. I don't know, Jen. I look for more keyboard players. Yeah, I, because okay, maybe that two Sunday a month thing is you know, for the person's work and family life, yeah, it just all they work. can do, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it would completely depend on a situation. Yeah, you just don't know. For me. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, 
I would, I would have whoever your main person is for keyboards. So like all up here when you say like, there's one person that's over all the guitar players. So our main guitar player yeah. is over all the guitar players. He's connecting with them. They have their own home group right. that they do outside of team night. So all the guitar players are connected. Mm -hmm. But they're going to services they're playing at. There's, I right. think the, the biggest thing I could do is say, I see your problem now, but let's talk about five years from now. What are you getting for five years from now? You better not have two keyboard players Raising there. Mm -hmm. Raise them up. Raise them up. Find them. Put out a thing. We are looking for keyboard players. We are looking for musicians. And even if they're not where your people are now, there should always be a drafting. Always. There should right. constantly be a passing down of what I've been giving, passing down. So start mm -hmm. that chain. Mm -hmm. And so that constantly people are always being, you know, given places to serve that aren't on, you know, a big stage and let people be faithful. But... And maybe if you don't have the capacity to raise people up, maybe send them other places that have something, like, you know, send them somewhere where that's happening, like to a school like this, or to have them take all the classes. Or do you know what I mean? Like, there are things that you're like, hey, if, we, if we're going to bring you up, send them off and, and say, hey, we need you to take these classes if you, if you feel called to this. And, you know, until you have the capacity to raise them up yourself, send them where they're doing that, you know? Worship you online. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we've got okay. incredible teachers when it comes to instruments and stuff. Like, they're mm -hmm. great. So, would you, sorry, just to clarify. So, would you say setting a clear expectation of, yes. you know, when you should be here, when I expect you to be here is necessary? Or is it? More like cast your vision and let them commit to what they know they can. Yeah, great. Okay. Be because then you know what you're working with. Because you don't, you don't, I mean, Jen's always talking about this. You don't want to, like, control anything. They're yeah. here because they want to be. It's not like yeah. you're, like, you're their paycheck. Mm -hmm. So you want to honor that. But at the same time, you want to say, hey, we're, this is something we're called to. This is a big deal. Do, do you, are you all in? And if you're all in, maybe this is what we need it to look like. And if you can't do that, then, you know. So it's, that's helpful. Yeah. Instead of like, mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let them take ownership. Hi, my name is Kessia. I am from a little church, little Indian Pentecostal church, right? Um, so we're like really small, like our whole congregation, little ones up to the big ones, they're about like 60 something people, <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, but we have very little youth. Like if we stand up on stage, our whole band is our youth is how small we are. And we have um, youngins. So we have kids from, we have like more little kids than we do have youth. That's um, the best. <laughs> it's also hard, very hard. You're like, that's a new perspective. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, you don't go to my church. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no offense. Um, <laughs> but... I guess my question is, have you guys ever led um, for younger children? Children meaning from like four all the way to like 10, Every day of my 12. Life. <laughs> uh, how do you guys, how, how does it look different than on stage? And how does it vary according to their age? Man, I wish some of our other, I wish Lydia was in here. And anyways, like we have... Lydia, have you? Lydia plays keys for us. She's so pregnant. She's so sweet and pregnant right now. She's so cute. She'd be, she'd be brilliant to talk to. She leads worship for the kids. Is over a lot of that. She's just so lovely. She's so childlike herself. I mean, she's perfect for it. I think I haven't led in settings like with a whole room of children before, so I can't. I mean, maybe when I was a kid, but the the point is that little ones are gonna. Their attention spans uh, will come and go. Some can sit much longer than others, especially the ones that have had so much sugar. You know, you're going to have a whole variety in the room. And we have to be okay with them coming in and being here and then going back to playing. I think, like, if we were all in a day when, like, when the tent of meeting was happening, I think we would have such a different perspective of this because they were all in, you know. It's like everybody's in there. And babies cry, and, and kids, you know, talk, and they dance, and they do all the things. Um, and in heaven, we'll all be together, right? The same time, different ages, hey. 
So there has to be, there has to be a grace for that, you know? And I think, I think first getting our minds around the fact that it, they're just going to come and go. They're going to, like, move throughout the room. They're going to play and twirl. I mean, when I'm with Wonder, I, I know that all kids are different, but watching these guys in there with all of our kids, are, they're so cute. I mean, they get out the scarves. We get out scarves at home. We get out. We give them something to put in their hands so they can, like, you know, something beautiful that they can focus on. Maybe um, not a flag, though. Yeah, not a flag. Not with wood. Loose some eyes. Just a something soft. Just something soft. No swords or anything like that, unless they're like foam. No scissors. But yeah, I, I think I think giving them um, giving giving them ownership, talking to them, like with, with wonder. Like the minute I start dancing through the house, she wants to be in my arms, spinning with me. I mean, she's like, I think we have to be the same people we are in worship anywhere else with them. Like, wonder needs to see my full-on deal. So she gets crazy mom at home. You think this is crazy? You know, she's a mom for her. <laughs> Falling into walls and stuff. Anyways, I don't have a big answer for you because I think you have a different calling on your life. I think you've got a really special situation there. <laughs> and God's given it to you for a reason. And he's going to teach you to keep their attention, and they're going to help you keep your wonder. There's something that's supposed to birth in your church that may not be seen somewhere else. I don't know that there's a formula for you or that even asking us is going to help your question. I think you and Holy Spirit are going on a journey, and I think that you guys have an interesting thing to walk out. But I think if you all learn from each other, it's going to be revival. And what's more beautiful than a room full of children in worship? You kidding me? I can't think of anything. Sounds like heaven to me. Thank you. We're out of time. We're out of time since I didn't answer your question at all. Took all that time not answering. Yeah, let's do it. Hello. My name is Hannah from Buffalo, New York. Um, my question cool. is, what are the main principles, values, boundaries, and priorities that you live your life by? That's a good question. It's a big it's a nice last, light question. At last question. <laughs> sorry. That boundaries, principles, and what, what was, I'm sorry, give me the list again. Values, principles, values. Boundaries. principles boundaries. Josh, you screened that question and you said that'd be okay for a last and question. Priority. I love you. God bless you. <laughs> boundaries. We'll probably have How a lot of the one? same ones. How about one? Yeah. You want to pick one? One? one of each. Um, one of each. Go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, Danny Silk, who's one of our family pastors here, he gave me the best advice ever. He said, "In you only have so many hours in your week. This is yep. very practical. I'm very practical. Uh, he said, you need to pick your big rocks. Like, what's the most important that happens in this week? And um, he said, if you just imagine a clear cylinder vase and rocks, pebbles, and sand, and you kind of just chuck it in as it comes along, you're not going to be able to fit the max capacity in there. But you've got to really establish what's the most important thing, schedule that in your week, and then what's a less big deal, and then if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And um, for me, one of the biggest boundaries I had to learn was I don't rest enough. So I yeah. burn myself out doing all the things, and then I'm grouchy and real mean. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I had to. Me that too. Boundaries for me was a big yeah. um, uh, journey for me. And um, rest, play, and work. I'm a very hard worker, and I like to play, but <laughs> middle finger. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I, I def, definitely on my own journey of, of rest. I feel like I'm doing a lot better at it these yeah. days than I did even five years ago. So yeah. that's just personal. Value. Oh, man, there's so many. We value a lot of things. Um, I think I value, wow, well, asking us what we value is like pick a star in the heavens. <laughs> Worst. Okay, um, one of the things I value most is, I mean, family, bottom line, connection to my family. I can't, this can't ever be more important than my family. Yeah. That's, that's my own personal conviction. I can't, if they are in suffering, if they're lacking in connection with me because of something else I'm doing, it is not worth it. Yeah. Um, it's striving for me. Like I, I have to be, there is grace to do everything God is calling me to do and stay connected to my family. If that's not happening, something's out of balance. Um, so that's my value. If, if I'm connected, if I stay connected in all the right places, then we're good. Um, um, the values? Principles. Principles. Priorities. Principles. I mean, principles. I hope that's obvious. Um, 
boundaries for me, I'm, I mean, I'm really similar to Jen in that way. I think one of my biggest, uh, I mean, for me in the last number of years has been saying no because I grew up a pastor's kid. So I was, I was the, I was used to being the yes girl and you should, you know, do all the things and seasons, man. B- boundaries, you have to know what season you're in. That's what's huge. There are seasons when we kind of say yes to everything that's put in front of us because that's what the Lord's doing. And then it's great and it's, it's green light for, for that season. And then the next one might be lots of red ones. So I think for me, boundaries are really simply just knowing what season I'm in and then guarding the, like God's heart in that season. What is he saying to me? What is this season about? I have to guard that thing. Um, so boundaries. Bless you, ma'am. Bless you. It's a wonderful covered sneeze. Thank yeah. you. And yeah. that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thanks. We love you. See you later. Yeah.